Welcome back everyone, this is Pete Cozanadon uh, for week two of West Coast Swing Variations and Drills. Uh, coming to you from my house in Madison. Uh, still quarantine, still it's the start of May 2020, although days have blended together so I'm not entirely certain of that. Don't quote me on that. Um, but last week I worked on some triple step variations where we kept the same triple rhythm. This time, I'm going to be doing some things that will replace the triple step. You'll still end up on the normal feet, you'll still start on uh, one foot and end on the other, but it gives you a couple of different options to vary it up. Some of them are going to be a little bit challenging, so uh, let's get into it right away. I'm going to step back, and as always, I want to make sure that you're keeping with your basics. Uh, two big things are going to be your pitch and your posture. So your posture, last time I said, imagine that you're kind of slouching and then you zip up a jacket and kind of now everything's nice and engaged. Uh, another way to think about it, maybe this will help, is imagine that there is a fountain inside of you and it's spurting up water. Uh, and all that water is energy that goes out through your limbs, through your head, uh, and that's holding it up. So you are shooting energy all out of your extremities and it's coming from the center. A little bit weird, uh, so if a jacket works better for you, go with a jacket. Point is, find something that works for you. <clears throat> and again, with pitch, uh, you want your head slightly ahead of your hips, not a whole lot, you don't want to arch around your back, you still want to keep your back straight, good posture even if it's a little bit forward. This is exaggerated, so it's really going to be more up like here. And again, the quick way to check it is can your knees move freely? Check that out. So, um, so on a normal triple step, we start on one foot and then we end on the same foot. So triple step, it would be, uh, from your perspective, it would be right and right, left and left, right and right, left and left. Um, but one of the nice things about it is that we can add or remove steps and still start and end on the same foot. So I'm gonna show you a few variations of this that are pretty simple to very difficult. Uh, and the point is for you to try them out at home and then Try them out dancing. So your homework is going to be a lot like last week, where I ask you to go through some basic patterns and do different triple steps. So I'm going to say replace the triple steps with what I show you today. All right, I've got five of them for you. The first is a single step anchor, which is really just a slow step. One step in two beats. So left, hop, left, hop, left, hop, left, hop. Now one of the key points to this is that you're not just going to get there and hang out forever. You're not just gonna get there. You're still going to keep constant movement throughout this. So if I go one, two, one, two, notice how I'm moving all the way through it. This is what I want you to do too. Move all the way through this. Um, if it helps you to begin with, think of it more as place, move, place, move, place, move, place, move. So if we're going through our normal West Coast Swing uh, rhythms, we would go walk, 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 triple step, place, move. Walk, walk, triple step, place, move. Uh, there's a way that you can get it. So the slightly more complicated version of the single step anchor is where I actually will get on my weight, but I won't completely straighten my leg. So something like this. Play, place my weight, straighten, place my weight, straighten, place my weight, straighten, place my weight, straighten. Also kind of a collect, but that's really something that just happens as a result of it. I'm not doing something like this, high, because this looks a little bit funny. Um, so, that's variation number one, single step anchor. You're taking one step in two beats. Great thing is, on any triple step, you can replace it with a single step anchor. As long as you travel about the same amount, you can feel the same to your partner. Next variation, number two, is sweeping straight back. This is a nice one to do off of any sort of sugar push, because you're already going straight forward or straight back. But what you're going to do is take whatever foot you have free. Uh, imagine that you just stepped in some gum, and you really need to get it off. So, oh, sweep it back like this. So from the side, oh no, I've got gum on my shoe. Sweep straight back. Uh, one of the 
big keys here though is that the energy to do it has to come from more of your center, more around your hips. Because if I do it just from my feet, oh no, I have gum. Doesn't really look so good. But if I put my whole body into it, I'm pressing with my energy going through my, from my hip, through my foot, it's a lot fuller and richer. It looks a lot better too. It works on the other leg too, so try it with the other leg. So, gum, you, gum, you. So, we're just going to do some uh, steps and triple steps and then uh, do it that way. So, let's start with first with this leg free. So, step, step, triple step, gum, you. One more time. Step, step, triple step, gum, you. Other side. This leg's free now. Step, step, triple step, gum, you. Step, step, triple step, gum, you. So what it would look like on a sugar push and why I really like this. I'm gonna do this followers part first. Here it goes, one, two, three, and four, five, six. Uh, I should actually end with my foot slightly back here. But you can see, I'm mostly in position right here. Once again, it's one, two, three, and four, five, six. And look, I'm back into my normal uh, uh, anchor position. From the leader side, we go one, two, three, and four, five, and six. Uh, next one we are going to do is a collect and slide. I like this one off of right underarm turns because it's in a nice uh, place that you can do this. And you're in a good position, you're at a good angle to be able to do this. So what you're going to do is, if you're going to end with a slight angle to your body, what you're going to do is take whatever foot leg is free, you're going to collect it in, and bring it up and bring it out. So, let's, uh, here, here's what I want to do. I want you to be facing this way. This leg is free. You are going to collect your foot in, like so. Twist your body, just slightly, doesn't have to be a lot. And then push off, go back. A little bit faster now, we're going Collect, twist, push. So it's five and six. The exact timing doesn't matter as long as you end ready to go back by six. One more time on this side. Collect, twist, push. And handily, we are on this side, but we're going to do it a couple times this leg. Collect, twist, push. One more time. Collect, twist, push. All right, last but not least, or our second last, second last of the slower ones is going to be a ronde. Uh, ronde is where you do a wide leg circle. Uh, it looks a lot like this. You've probably seen a lot of people do it, so it's actually really popular. You get into one knee, you sweep your leg around. Into one knee, sweep your leg around and then collect at the end. You can also do it the reverse way. So I kick forward and I sweep back. Which one makes the most sense is gonna depend on what pattern you end up doing. Because if you're doing something like uh, sugar tuck or if you're coming off of one of those outside turns, uh, it's gonna make a lot more sense to go forward. Uh, in some cases it's gonna make a lot more sense to go backward. But that's just gonna to have to be something you experiment with on your own. Uh, so, proper way to do a round eight. Pick one leg to put your weight over. Bend your knee slightly. The other leg is back behind it. We're going to do a forward round eight first. And what I want you to do is first twist your upper body and then bring your leg across. This is wrong. Going with your leg first is wrong. And here's why it was. It looks kind of funny. Leg first. Yeah! Got it. 
That was great. So, what I want you to do, twist your upper body first. Let your back leg come through as a result of it. I'm going to go a little bit faster so you can see what it might look like uh, doing it a little bit faster. In there, I can turn all the way around with it. Uh, I can't start if you're dancing with a partner. You aren't going to be able to do the entire turn. Uh, but for practicing, if you have a floor that allows you to do it, it's a good idea to just get into it a little bit more and try to practice and turn it. Works as well on the other side too. So your other leg, put your weight over it. Other leg back. Twist your upper body. And bring the other leg front after you've twisted your body. Now just do it wrong. Do it with the leg. See how funny it feels. So I'm all ready to go. Leg. Nailed it. Uh, so, last but not least, it's a little bit of a complicated one. All the rest of the ones that we've done now are slow variations. This time I'm going to do one where I add a uh, quick variation to it. It is a kick ball change. So, this one is a little bit more complicated. If you don't quite get this the first time, that's fine. Try it again some other time. So what you're going to do is Imagine that you're coming off of four, let's just say off of a sugar bush. So one, two, three, and four. You'll have one of the legs free. That free leg is going to plant, and then you're going to tap to the side or kick. And then put the ball of foot on the one that you just kicked. Ball, change. And now the other leg is free. So where you would be doing step and step, so you step a little bit early and then kick, ball, change. Step a little bit early and kick, ball, change. You're gonna step a little bit early, kick, ball, change. The other side, it works that way too. One, two, three, and four, and kick, ball, change. If you don't feel comfortable crossing your feet in front, right now that's fine. It would look like and kick ball change. So, just putting it quickly to a pattern. I'm going to go from the leader side, just doing a sugar push. It's going to look like this. One, two, three, and four. And kick ball change. Hey look, I am back in my proper anchor position. It worked. From the follower side, it's going to look like this. One, two, three, and four, and kick, ball, change. And once again, I'm back in my anchor position. These are great options to use when you're dancing with someone because uh, you start and end where you should, and it's a way that you can express yourself uh, within West Coast Swing. So, your homework, your drill for this time, is like last week. You're going to do a handful of basic patterns mimicking them, okay, how they would go on the dance floor. If you don't have a partner, that's fine. Just go through the motions of them. Uh, and then on five and six, or seven and eight, whichever is going to be your anchor step leading into the next pattern, I want you to not do a normal triple step. I want you to do one of these variations. So off of a sugar push, I'm going to follow for just a bit. One, two, three, and four. I'm going to sweep back. Going to do a uh, right underarm turn. I'm going to do the collect and slide. One, two, three, and four. Collect and slide. Going to do a sugar tuck. One, two, three, and four with a rondo. It's a great place for rondos. Uh, I'm just going to do a sugar push and a kick ball change. One, two, three, and four, and kick ball change. Uh, and last but not least, don't forget that single step anchor. So if I was going to do a left side pass, I go one, two, three, and four, five, six. Or five, six. Single step anchors are great because it uh, gives you a lot of variation. And if you get something that you don't expect on the dance floor, you're one, you're one step away from your somewhere you know. 
That's great. So once again, thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next week.